So a couple months ago, I did a video on the bond market and how the bond market is the truth of what is to come. It is the leading indicator to what we should expect in the coming months, years. So I decided to create a video on the yield curve. And because there's a lot of talk on the, uh, the news channels about the yield curve, if the yield curve is steepening or if the yield curve is uh, flattening or inverting or what the yield curve is. And I think a lot of people get, um, you know, misunderstanding of what the yield curve is and what it can tell us in the future. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the uh, four different uh, types of yield curves and what they mean and how you can use them to better position your portfolio for the future. So in my examples, I'm going to use the 10 year and the 30 year treasury. Now you, you can also use the 10 year and three month treasury and it'll give you an idea of a uh, different indication of risk on risk off situations. So let's talk about the normal yield curve using the 10 year and 30 year treasury. And what it basically is, is that the 10 year treasury yield is lower in, than the 30 year treasury yield. And it's a very nice move. So uh, a kind of sloping curve. Um, it basically means things are normal. There's basically risk on uh, type of investing overall. And it is just a normal economic environment. Where it gets a little different is when the 10 year treasury yield is rising in comparison to the 30 year treasury yield and it is falling. And what that typically is an indicator of is that the uh, people who are investing, uh, institutional investors are under realizing that there is more risk in the market. And so they want to get uh, they, they're going to a flight of, to safety and typically they'll go to the highest yielding bond, the 30 year treasury bond in comparison to the 10 year treasury bond and drive the yield down, which causes the value of the 10 year, 30 year treasury bond to go up. Now, when we start to see a flattening of the yield curve, so the 10 year and the 30 year yields are just about the same it is an indication that we're in a transition period, a transition to a risk on or a risk off situation. So for instance, uh, if we look back uh, to August of 2019, you'll start to see that the 30 year treasury yield was going down versus the 10 year treasury yield. And we're starting to see a inversion of the yield curve. And that is historically a uh, indicator that we should expect a recession in the next two to six months. And if you go back to August, October, between August and November of 2019, and look at the yield curve and it's uh, how it played out, it was a leading indicator that we were headed for a recession. And you think about it, at that time we were hearing about um, China having a COVID situation or a sickness rolling around. And I know here in October, November, uh, the first person that we knew of who got sick but couldn't be diagnosed was back in November after traveling up north. So later on in December, we started to hear about uh, China and it's starting to lock down because of the COVID, uh, COVID-19. And then we got into January of 2020, and that's when we started to see the uh, inversion of the uh, 10 and, and 30 year uh, tr U.S. Treasury or the 10 and three month Treasury, uh, whichever you decide to use, started to invert. And that was a very big indicator that we were headed for a recessionary environment within the next two to six months. Look at where we're at now. Great indicator. Well, today the yield curve is flat. If you look at the 10, 10 year and three month, we're at 0.83%. Historically, the long term yield curve is 1.19%. Uh, uh, and we're now starting to see the yield curve uh, start to move downward, meaning uh, we're going from a flat yield curve, a transitional yield curve, to now we're starting to see every so often a inversion starting there. And so 
one of the things that I'm watching is that yield curve and the movement of that yield curve between the 10 and three month treasuries and the 10 and 30 year treasuries. You can look at different variations of this, but what you want to find, what you'll see is when we are headed to a recession environment, you people who are taking more risk because of a longer term maturity bonds are going to want to get paid more and they are you're seeing a flood into uh, that risk higher risk long-term maturity in uh, treasuries and you're seeing people go out to the 30 and that's what's driving the 30-year yield down in relation to the 10-year treasury yield so one thing we we would love to see is a steepening of the yield curve and that is where the 30-year treasury yield is rising mean pe meaning people are exiting that 30-year treasury driving the bond price down and the yield up in relation to the 10-year treasury so people who are has who have wanted to get paid for a longer duration in treasuries are now exiting and you get this steepening of the yield curve and historically what this explains or indicates is an expansion of the economy a risk on environment of the economy and so to come out of a recession or a depressionary or stagflation environment you want to see a steepening yield curve because it's indicating to you, you that people are willing to take more risk put risk on versus risk off and when risk off is that inversion of the yield curve and so you want to see that expansion unfortunately as of december 29th we're seeing a flattening of that 10 year and three month uh, treasury um, and so that is an indicator that we're in a transition period if you're we look at the 10 uh, 10 year and 30 year we're also still seeing a bit of a flattening but more of an expansion kind of move or steepening of that yield curve which is an indication of people are putting more risk on it's a matter of balancing uh, creating a harmony between the 10 and three month and the 10 and 30 year. I use it as an indicator of where is our economy headed? And right now, it looks like from a 30, 10 to 30 year standpoint, we're starting to see expansion. We're starting to see risk on. Uh, the VIX is pulled back to lower lows, which is great. Uh, and, and that's an indicator of, once again, an expansion into the first quarter of this year. Now. We all know we have a new uh, presidential administration entering uh, in, entering the uh, White House uh, as of this time. And so what are we to expect? Are we to expect a uh, inversion of the yield curve? Are we to expect a uh, steepening of the yield curve? For, my, for me, I want to see a steepening of the yield curve because that means expansion. That means risk on. That means risk on assets. That means higher markets and growth. What I don't want to see is an inversion because that's a fear trade. That is a risk off environment. And when you have that, then you enter recessions like we have been in for the last, what, six, nine months. So in closing, using the yield curve as a leading indicator to a expanding economy or a retracting economy or a recessionary environment or a bull market, yield curves can be very big indicator and historically they're spot on. If we had looked back at the yield curve and really studied it back in July of 2019, it would have been a leading indicator that we were headed for a recessionary environment and it would have been another indicator that would have clicked and we would have said, you know what, what else is going on in the world that could spur on a recession? And what we would have found was the coronavirus. So what is coming in the coming year? I mean, we have a flat yield curve right now. Where are we headed? What could cause a steepening of the yield curve, creating an expansion in the economy, or what could create an inverting yield curve, which would be a retraction in the economy? What is going to be that thing that gives us an indication to where the yield curve goes in the future?